people to imagine that the year is 1904 and you've just arrived by boat. You've heard the development of a massive copper mine is underway. We're digging mostly for copper here, but also gold, silver, lead, zinc, and cadmium. Now this is really good news for you guys, and you should be smiling, because it means work and money for many years to come. If you were an above ground worker, a mill worker or manager, you live right here at Britannia Beach. If you were an underground miner or part of their family, you were living four kilometers up the mountainside in a town that we built up there called Mount Shear. And the whole reason we built that town is because that's where we access the main mine tunnels from. So it was just easy for our miners to get to work. There are 150 miles or 210 kilometers of tunnel and vertical shaft in the mountain. And that means if we put the mine into a straight line, it would start in Vancouver and end in Seattle. So it was a massive operation. So I'm going to take you lovely people on a journey underground How this much morning. How do we get? What's our pay? I'm not yeah. going to tell you that until the very end, otherwise you might not come, my friend. <laughs> That's a smart question. I'm, I'm going to be a smart move here. So I'm going to get you people to board the train. I'm going to take you underground, show you how the miners worked, and some of the very difficult conditions they faced here whilst doing that. So come and have the front seats of the house. Here we go. You do not have a union, oh. sir. No unions here at Britannia until 1943. Oh. A long time, yeah. And they did a very good job of keeping them out. That's what I figured, yeah. A good deal. Well, would this thing run? Does it look like this? Oh, it runs. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like, look, there's water coming down there. Look at that seat. That looks like the seat at the river. Similar to the seat where you sat in the train. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. Okay, miners, so we're heading down to start our eight hour shift of work. There are safety rules, they are as follows. Number one, hard hats remain on your heads at all times. Hands and feet stay inside the train. Do not touch the rock whilst we're underground. And other than that, I promise I'll take care of everything. If you have cameras and you'd like to take photographs, by all means, take as many as you like. Sweet. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. Will we get a lunch break? Uh -huh. Yes, you'll have to eat where you are working, my friend. Oh, really? Yep, just like the miners did. Here we go. So I guess it's an electric motor, Here we go. I guess. This is electric, yes, sir. Everything underground was running on electric, compressed air, those two. So the explosives magazine was always located at the entrance of our tunnels for safety reasons. This is where we stored all the dynamite underground. Only 
only a small amount was kept down here, just enough for one 24 hour period of working. The reason for that, my friends, the conditions down here. So it's very damp, it's very wet. The water permeates through the rock all year round and there is nothing we can do to stop that. Now you have to be extremely careful with dynamite. I don't know why you're laughing. Because if this becomes damp or wet, it becomes highly volatile. Which meant just the tiniest of turns could blow everybody up. But of course it is fake, because we're not in the habit of killing our visitors. The only place in this entire mine to have a stationary electrical light was here inside the explosives magazine. With the door shut, that light would generate enough heat to keep the dynamite dry and stable. Painted red to indicate danger, and always constructed of wood to reduce the risk of sparking. So we're going to continue with our train ride to our drilling chamber, where the action starts. Coming up on the right-hand side of the tunnel, you're going to see what looks like blue toothpaste all over the rocks. It's copper oxidizing, it's very cool to look at, and I will shine my headlight on it so that everybody here sees it well. Everybody feeling good? Yeah, well, Perfect. Yeah. You look quite comfortable, so that's a one, good start. One question of yes. the shoring. I don't see much shoring. I see the rock looks pretty solid, but I don't see... No, any... sir. So this is a hard rock mine. Okay, oh, so okay. this is really, really solid. All this foliation you see in the rock here, this is all natural. The yeah. rock here is called tuff and schistous tuff. And all this is oh, natural schistous. foliation. Schistous. Okay. So the rock here is sedimentary <clears throat> and volcanic. We have yeah. a mix of two. Yes, yes, but yes. because we were a hard rock mine, we did not have to do all the shoring and the supports that you do in other types of mining. Oh, okay? okay. The big bag that we saw as we were traveling down the tunnel here, that's how we pumped oxygen down underneath underground for the men to breathe. So these huge bags would be pumped with oxygen, and that's how we breathe. We have people underground too watching CO2 levels very carefully, but unlike coal mining, we didn't have any gases here. So there are some benefits to hard rock mining. Hard rock mining. Okay? okay? Awesome. Off we go again. Had there been any accidents when the mine was up and running and all that? Of course there were, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you will see why. Here we go. Why is this tunnel here? 
It's obviously not part of the main mine system. They were all located up there in the mountains. So this tunnel was blown out here over 100 years ago, and it was blown out to use as a service tunnel. I don't know if you noticed the chutes as we came down. The ore would be coming down, and the whole purpose of this tunnel was to transport the ore to mill number one and mill number two. Over the sequence of the tour, we will find out what happened to those two mills. When they no longer existed, this place was shut up. This is not at all the conditions the men were working underground. The tunnels underground are far smaller. They're only six by six, basically the size of that yellow outline you see right here. So whilst this is giving you a very good idea of what it's like to be underground, it's not exactly the same size. This is much bigger, okay? So welcome to our drilling chamber. This is where the hard work continues. We're gonna start right here with the very beginning of this mine's history. This is the first drill we used here underground. It's called the wood drill, and it was named after the manufacturer. This machine caused some very serious problems for the miners. Number one, when it goes off, it sounds like a submachine gun. The miners went deaf very quickly because of course there was no protection back in those days. Number two, it weighs in at just under 300 pounds. So it would have certainly taken three or four big guys to move it each time it had to be positioned for drilling. But the worst thing about this machine is as we pulverize the rock, it creates masses of dust. In the dust in this mine, there is silica. We use that today, of course, to make glass. The miners inhaled the dust. It destroyed their lungs, and they ended up with a fatal disease called silicosis. It is for that reason our miners here nicknamed this machine the Widowmaker. So it was not a nice drill at all, everybody. We're going to move on up here to 1920, and everywhere I go, you go. Perfect. Was it running on gasoline? It's running on compressed air, my friend. Oh. So even in 1904, at the very beginning of this mine, we're using compressed air, and that is what's running the machinery down So here. was it a big box of compressed air? No, we're producing all our own hydroelectricity here from dams above the south, the town site. We had a powerhouse here at Britannia, and another one up at the town site oh. of Mount Shea. Okay. So it's very advanced for the time, okay? So in 1920, my friends, we saw the arrival of the SOPA drill. This was a big time in mining. At this time, we brought water underground. This drill is only used for vertical drilling. It's capable